Then we'll go down to the Rockets update function. First, we'll make it face the cursor. Then, we're going to need to find out the distance between the cursor and the rocket's position. We also divide this distance by 30. And just to ensure the rocket doesn't go too fast, we'll do a couple of conditionals just to make sure it doesn't exceed 1 or minus 1. And now we'll move the rocket. If the rocket's position is within a certain boundary, then tempx and tempy will not be changed. However, if the rocket's next update would place it outside of the predetermined boundaries, then it will not translate that far. Back in the Rapid 2D interface, we need to go back to the rocket object and assign the rocket script to it. Now let's get the camera to follow the rocket around the screen. Open up user main CPP and go to the update function. This line of code will get the rocket object and then get its position and assign it to a rapid 2D vector called ScreenPOS. We set its x value to 0 because we only want the camera to follow it along the y axis. Similar to before, we ensure the camera doesn't follow the rocket too far. That way, our background image is always on screen. Finally, we set the camera position to screen pos. So here's our first test. The rocket's moving around and the camera's following it. Unfortunately, there's a little bit of black space on the bottom of the background image. So if we go back to user main and change the boundary from 15 to 13, that problem will be fixed. At the moment, as soon as the game starts, the rocket will follow the cursor's position. By using a ball, we can ensure the rocket will only move when the user has clicked on it.
Now let's start collecting gifts. We'll initialize the gift in the same way that we initialized the rocket. We'll also set its tag to hidden gift. We're going to be using that later. We also call the game object set render function as false. This will hide the object from the user. will also reveal only one of the gifts. This works because all game objects cannot have the same name. And because we're going to be calling all of the gift objects gift, only the first object can be called gift. The second gift will be called gift1, the third will be called gift2, and so on. Therefore, only one gift will set its tag to from Santa and set its render to true. To make the rocket collect the gifts, we go to the rocket onCollide function. If the collided object's tag is from Santa, then we'll hide the present by setting its render to false and setting its tag to hidden gift. To show this all in action, I'm going to make two other gifts. To duplicate game objects, click on it and press Ctrl D. So as you can see, only one gift is visible. And if we fly into it, it disappears. Now let's add lots of gifts. First, go to the user main header. Create a new function there called pick gift with one parameter, an integer max ID. Then in user main.cpp, Follow this code. First, we get a random ID from one to whatever max ID would be when pick gift is called. We create a game object pointer called temp object and we get the object that has that ID. We write a while loop that says, if the object we've received does not have the tag hidden gift, then repeat this process. This will loop until it finds an object that has the tag hidden gift. When this is found, we set its render to true to make it visible. Set its tag to from Santa. So where do we use this function? In rocket.cpp, go to the rocket onCollide function. 
In between set render and set tag, we want to type user main colon colon git instance. We want to call pick gift and the parameter will be 16. So why do we use 16? 16 will generate a random number from 1 to 16. We have 15 gifts, one rocket, and of course, one tree. Since tree is created first on the background layer, that object's ID will be zero. Our pick gift function will cycle until it finds one gift with the hidden gift tag. And since rocket can never possibly have that tag, that leaves us with our 15 gifts. So here's what we've accomplished for the first part of this tutorial. The next part will be showing you how to add score and time to turn this little toy into a proper game.